Hey. I was like talking for one minute and it wasn't recording. If you saw my last video, I apologize that the intro music was way too loud. I forgot to adjust the volume. That was my bad. I'm going to try not to make that mistake again. Yeah. For this week, I thought of two video ideas. The first one is my current obsession, so I'm going to talk about some things I'm currently obsessed with. <laughs> and then the second idea was my imaginary friends. And I couldn't decide which one to do, so I just thought, why not just do both? I even put on clip-on earrings. So the my imaginary friends part of the video, I will get to. I will explain that in a little bit. But first, I will tell you what I'm currently obsessed with. The first three things are all kind of like beverages. <laughs> the number one thing is ginger water, which, yeah, I know, I've already talked about this in previous videos. It's just like a punch of ginger into your water. So all I do is just I put chunks of ginger into a big, big pot, and then I boil the water so that the water gets that gingery taste. I put that into a container, and then I put that in the fridge. Lo and behold, actually got some right here. Ta-da! Ginger water. <laughs> this is actually so heavy. Oi! Please don't spill this, Julie. Okay, stay, 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 stay. I'm sitting on like free pillows right now because I wanted to like make myself tall enough so that you could see those wonderful seashell frames. So it's cold, it's gingery, it's watery, and it just makes drinking water feel a little bit more healthy. And I'm Chinese, so like Chinese people love ginger, so there you have it. The second thing that I want to rave about is Sorel. This is also a beverage. See, look, this is what the package looks like. A lady from my church always gets me these packages, which is so nice of her because she knows I'm obsessed with this. Um, she's from... Barbados, I think, and I'm not sure where she buys it. It says, place one cup of Caribbean Delight Natural Sun-Dried Sorel and a quarter ounce of beaten ginger in a container. Oh, this is a cool little recipe. Sweeten to taste with sugar, honey, and serve with a cold, refreshing drink. Yeah, so the first time I had Sorel was actually at one of her events. It was like a Barbadian event, so that's probably the recipe that they followed. They made theirs like super good, but what I do is I just put the flowers into a tea pot and then I put the tea pot, I put water in the teapot and then I just cold brew the flowers basically. So it just makes like a really strong hibiscus tea. That's like my version of it, that's like the lazy version of it. If you see that I tried to paint my nails today, but it's kind of ugly, so just ignore them. This is something I've been drinking a lot for like three years now probably. The third thing is another beverage. This is Lavender Swirl. I actually haven't had this in a while, but this Lavender Swirl White Tea from David's Tea. And I am obsessed with lavender because ever since I had this vegan lavender chocolate, I have become obsessed with all things lavender, like my shampoo and my conditioner lavender, this tea is lavender. I don't know if David's Tea still has this because they kind of switch out their teas, which is inconvenient. If you're watching this and you know me, you should totally get me something lavender for my birthday in July. Like a lavender candle, a lavender bath bomb, just a suggestion. <laughs> and then the fourth thing is this little mini tripod. If you love photography, like I do, and if you like to take pictures of yourself, this is a must have. I just got this one from Amazon. The brand of this one is UB Size. I almost lost this the other day because I just like, I was taking pictures of buttercups, which are <laughs> my favorite flowers. And then I just put this in the grass and left it there. I literally walked away for like, I don't know, 20 minutes. And I was like, wait, where's my tripod? And I was like, oh, if someone took this from the grass next to the buttercups where I left it, I would be so mad. So then I went back and I found it in the grass next to the buttercups. It was still there, so good thing I didn't lose it that day. I just put it onto the Canon g 7 x Mark III, which I'm using to film this video right now, solar. Or I actually got my old Nikon D5100 DSLR Stellar 
to work again because I formatted the SD card and then it ended up working. The reason I couldn't use this camera before is because there was this error where it kept saying that the SD card is not working or whatever and that you need to put in a different SD card but then after I formatted the SD card it worked. So I think that the Nikon little system just doesn't react well to SD cards that have any other files on it. Like if you put in the SD card from your Canon and it had Canon files on it. The precious Nikon baby does not like that. And yeah, this is like super heavy, so sometimes it's like not easy to use it with this tripod, but you can still kind of get it to work sometimes. And I usually just shoot pictures that are vertical, like for my lookbook. That's what I do, so then I just tilt this little part to the side, like you can tilt it all the way down. That way you can have the camera vertical. I'll insert a picture of my most recent lookbook picture that I took with the DSLR, the heavy DSLR, and I just tilt it. I'm also like obsessed with this garlic bread recipe that I learned recently. It's just like you fry the, the vegan margarine on the slice of bread and then you make it all like melted and nice and then you add garlic powder and then you add your parsley flakes. Voila, really instant garlic bread. That's like so simple, but I need to stop eating that because I think if I keep continuing at this rate, I'm going to be 30 pounds heavier by the time quarantine ends. <laughs> so I'm going to halt that obsession, hopefully. So then the my imaginary friends portion of this video, what I mean when I say my imaginary friends is I'm talking about those fictional characters that I created in my fictional book series that I made when I was 12 and I just kind of want to open up a little bit about my feelings. <laughs> I just, I laugh at myself when I say anything that's like more personal because to be honest, I feel like I post a lot like on social media but I don't really post personal things that much. I mostly just post my outfit or something like that. Despite me always posting, I don't really talk about things I'm going through that much. I don't know, I just cringe myself out when I talk about these things because I think it's kind of weird. I don't know. It's weird to open up to the internet, I guess. But here we are. Because I think that sharing these things has value and so if somebody can relate to this, I think that it's worth it to share. What prompted this idea, my imaginary friends? <laughs> okay, I, I know I didn't explain anything yet. Just bear with me. But what prompted this idea was that a few days ago I felt kind of down and it was like the first time I felt down in this whole entire quarantine thing because it was like the first time that it really settled in with me because for the first few months or whatever I was just watching all these casting director inspirational live streams and stuff. All these casting directors were giving lots of cool motivational speak speeches and so I felt like oh yeah this is awesome I love quarantine and stuff I don't know because I was I was happy but then this week like after Joyce came back I stopped sort of watching so many live streams and it kind of made me reflect on my life <laughs> reflect on my life <laughs> because I just wasn't consuming as much media I guess so I was just in my own head, which is a scary place sometimes. I just kind of got into this feeling down type of thing one day. It just lasted one morning basically, so it's not a super long time that I was feeling this way, but it was just like that one morning I was thinking about my acting career and how I think I really paid a price, not really paid a price, but there was definitely a trade-off. Like once, I hit the age of 12, there was like shift in my life and it was caused by my parents's, my parents had like this physical fight that was a little bit traumatizing. It was an incident that involved the police and that changed my life. That incident is what caused me to decide to become an actor and I at that point pursued acting 
pretty intensely and heavily for a 12 year old or 13 year old also like around that time i think there's like so many changes with just your friend group in general like everybody when you're 13 14 freshman in high school you're kind of changing and you're finding yourself you're finding who you like and who you don't like and what you're interested in and what you're not interested in i felt so much like i needed to prioritize acting so acting was basically like my number one thing yeah and I felt misunderstood and like rejected just by the people in my life, I guess, my friends or whatever. We all sort of grew out of each other. Like I used to have this friend group. I mean, everybody's alone right now, so it's not like I'm any different, but you might be able to tell from my channel that I'm like alone a lot, like even before the quarantine. Like it's not that I don't have friends. I do, but it's just like I feel like I didn't get to stay in touch with friends from my school, like from my high school because I like ostracized myself during high school. Confession time, this is so dramatic. That's why I wanted to do the whole current obsessions thing in the beginning of the video because it's more lighthearted. And now it's like, we're gonna be in the pouring rain and it's gonna be dramatic now. I totally isolated myself because I felt like nobody understood my dream. I had this huge dream of becoming an actor. I kind of understand now where my friends were coming from. They thought I was out of my mind and in a way, maybe I was like a little bit out of my mind, although I wouldn't say that really because I know and I still know now that I want to act and that's what I want to do. It's just that like I felt like people didn't support me having that dream because they thought it was lunacy. <laughs> So when I was having that sort of like down moment, I was sort of reflecting on that and how I wish I could have not lost my friends, I guess. But they were all like changing in their own right. Everyone evolves when you're 12, 13, 14. I compare myself to other people and I see how other people are still friends with all of their school friends. But I didn't get to keep like those friends that I had in my preteen years. And so I just felt jealous about that. I felt like, oh, I don't know, I felt rejected or replaced. That's sort of the trade-off that I got. If you've ever been to an acting class, you might have had an acting teacher who would tell you that being an actor is committing yourself to a lonely life. I'm sure you think that, you know, famous actors, they're not lonely, but to explain that phrase, actors basically lend their bodies to be instruments for the carrying out of certain characters, and so they live the life of that character in a sense, like that's their job when the cameras are rolling. That is what I wanted. I wanted to escape my life. That was like literally perfectly in line with what I wanted. That's what an actor does, essentially. People who are actors, they basically sacrifice a lot of probably their personal life. They put a lot of their own personal, like mental, emotional energy into the craft of acting. And sometimes that can cause them to not be able to fully put their energy into their personal life. Maybe their significant other wouldn't understand some of the things that they do in the name of acting. That's what that acting teacher would mean by that. I mean, if you look at a lot of like the old Hollywood stars, like a lot of them, they died without children. I mean, I'm sure some people had children, <laughs> but you know, a lot of the great uh, female stars just you know had a string of unsuccessful marriages a lot of female actresses go the surrogate route you know what i'm getting at right that's the t i guess i'm sweating so much right now oh my gosh oh so the imaginary friends oh my gosh i didn't even get to that yet so that's when i created the alphas which is like this book series that i love that i that I made when I was 12 and because I didn't have so much of a social life at the time I kind of had my fictional characters in my head as my imaginary friends all I dreamed about every day was just like about getting away from my life getting away from high school getting away escaping that's all I wanted was to create and live in another reality I hope this explains a bit more about me I hope someone maybe can relate to that. I know a lot of people don't have a good time in high school, including me. 
but at the same time I have to look at it more like glass half full rather than glass half empty right so there's so many things that I do have like joy's coming back like I should focus on things that I do have because maybe those people who did get to stay in touch with their friends from high school or whatever or who are still friends with their close-knit friend group and stuff from school maybe they don't have such a close relationship with their siblings like maybe there are things that I take for granted that other people wish they had you know it's like role reversal vice versa like other side of the coin type of deal I am sure that I have lots of things that other people would compare themselves to me and wish that they had that so that's why I sort of like got over that mood pretty quickly like yeah there's so many things I lack but there's also things that I love and that I have like my mom and my sister and today's Mother's Day actually so happy Mother's Day <laughs> yeah that's basically it that's all I wanted to share for this video Thanks for hanging out. Oh yeah, another bonus thing that I'm obsessed with right now is Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> it's this sci-fi show. I love sci-fi. It was filmed in Vancouver. Treat your mom. Me and my sister are going to clean out the kitchen for her today. I guess by the time I post this, maybe it's already not Mother's Day, so I hope you treated your mom. <laughs> Bye.